Well, Crocs fans, tonight's game at the Swamp was not without controversy as our very own Eddie Gill and the Wollongong Hawks' Tyson Demos involved in a bit of argy-bargy on the court. Have a look at our footage. Decide for yourself who was at fault. Keep your eye on the bottom left-hand side of the screen. So there you have it, folks. That's what happened tonight at the Swamp. Eddie, of course, had to be dragged away from the opposing team by his teammates and was clearly not happy with the argy-bargy. Anyway, with that out of the way, let's get on to our end of game wrap up and have a listen to our coaches and see how they summed up the game. Wow. Yeah, at uh, not 118 to 114 tonight. Um, low scoring defensive game, uh, not pretty to, to uh, watch, I imagine. Um, uh, we talked about uh, the fact that uh, they had played the night before and um, the fatigue factor could set in. Uh, I think you have to give Wollongong a, a hell of a lot of credit tonight. Um, they made the game kind of ugly and they slowed it down and, and made it a defensive game. And, um, uh, you know, they did what they had to do to make it a close game and give themselves a great opportunity to win it. But uh, uh, I think we, we showed some, some poise and, and uh, uh, knocked down some free throws down, down the end and, and did a hell of a job. Actually, I'm kidding. We did not shoot a free throw in the game. And this is my tw this now seriously. This is my 26th year uh, in professional basketball. After scouting maybe a thousand NBA games, hundreds of NBA games, and coaching 500 games as a head coach, probably, I have never seen a game where a team did not shoot a free throw. It's amazing to me that that could happen. Would have been called differently. I, I just. However you want to look at that, I don't know how that can happen. Um, it's just amazing to me. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was, uh, we kind of ran it. We figured, I would figure they would switch. Uh, I kind of ran a little thing just to get Eddie the ball, and then it was just a, a, an Eddie and uh, Jake on ball, and just told Eddie to create, and obviously he... Uh, Made a hell of a play and scored at the exact time that uh, uh, we needed to, or to, or last time we needed to take that shot. So he, you know, he's a veteran and knows what it takes, and and uh, it was a perfectly executed play. Do you think that little moment with Amos kind of fired him up? Did he think he really kind of just stepped up? Yeah, I didn't see what happened, but uh, yeah, I think it fired him up a little bit. And uh, um, whatever it takes, as long as you get fired up and, and make plays, that's that's all I need to need as, to have. Right. As a coach, it could be at that moment. Could be tempting to take the player out of the game just to try and take the, the heat out, but you chose to keep oh, Eddie in. I, I, no, I, I, I don't do that. I think, uh, I, I think uh, Eddie's uh, professional enough and understands that uh, uh, the situation and, and won't escalate the situation. But I want him to, uh, uh, you know, use that emotion and, and maybe get a little more involved in the game and get other guys involved. And I think it picked us up a little bit. Yeah, again, it's, it's you know, not by design, uh, you know, going into the game, uh, but as the game progressed, it was, it, it kind of came that way that I wanted to switch as much as we could defensively. They were isolating uh, Luke as much as they could in the corner with Foreman, and uh, we didn't rotate enough a, a few times, and I just wanted to take that out of their offensive arsenal. Uh, so we switched and, and kind of stopped their penetrations. Uh, Obviously, we gave up some offensive rebounds down the stretch, but uh, for the most part, you know, it, it, they didn't hurt us. Um, yeah, yeah, Vinny's, uh, uh, you know, kind of maturing before our eyes and, and uh, having a great season. And, and uh, you've heard me say a number of times that, uh, you know, this is just uh, just the beginning. I think he's got a hell of a future in front of him.
Well, in my respect, their last couple of minutes when the game's on the line, looked like Elvin was fit and available. Earlier in the season, you might have had him on the floor, but Lee told out there, believe he's, he's ready to take care of business at that end of the game. Well, I think, you know, these guys have to, you know, believe in me like I believe in them. I, you know, if I've told the guys from day one, you know, uh, and you've heard me say it, I, it's not up to me. To, I don't decide who plays. If you're playing well, I'm going to leave you in the game. I've never taken a player out for playing well. Vinny had it going, and, and that unit kind of had it going defensively. Um, and I thought they'd get the, the, the game done and get it, get the job done, and they did. How important a break through that barrier the first time you guys won three on the trot this season? Yeah, we talked that, about that before the game, and that is not a big concern of mine. It's just I just go game by game. Um, obviously, now we'll go for four in a row, but uh, I'm not thinking of four in a row. I'm just thinking of Adelaide. Obviously, as I said, it's a bit of a cliche, but winning can be a habit to come. Yeah, I think, you know, uh, we've won it in overtime in Melbourne. We've won a double overtime here. We've won a close one here, and I, I think uh, that grows on a team. And it, You learn how to win as a, as a team and as a unit, and hopefully that's what we're doing. I suppose if you go back to the other Hawks game as well here, you won by one point there. Do, do you believe that when the game is on the line that you have the team that will hold its nerve? Well, so far they've kind of proven that, and, uh, you know, hopefully it continues. But, uh, um, you know, you, you learn by, by doing, and you know, the, the longer or the more often we have close games, the more often we'll have opportunities to finish games, and so far we've done it. I think sometimes, like today, you're, I think you're out by seven at three-quarter time, you shouldn't be in a position where it's that close? Or? Well, you, you know, you have to give uh, Wollongong credit. It's two teams played, and, and they're still a, a good basketball team. You know, they, they won a, a, a difficult game last night in a diff, diff, difficult venue, uh, came down here and played with some uh, some poise and and, uh, and made the game the, the way that they needed to make it and uh, you know to our credit we we won the ball game. Yeah, well, uh, I guess yeah, I didn't as I said I didn't really know it was uh, my fiftieth game until you said something before practice on Friday. So yeah, it was good. Good to know that the coach in those dying minutes has the faith in you to you know, keep your eye on the court when Elvin's there and ready to go. Well, yeah, as I said before, it's like it gives me sort of gives me confidence to know that Paul's got confidence in me, sort of leave me out there at that point in time. Sort of keep in the back of my mind, you know, that he's got faith in me. So, as I say, it gives me that confidence. What did it, what, how did the game feel out there? Was it scrappy as it looked in the game? Um, well, yeah, as Jake said in the locker room after, we sort of we had a good week of practice and we sort of, even though we got the win, it was a little, could have been a lot better. It was very scrappy. So, even though we got there, uh, finished the way we wanted to, uh, it was good to get the win. Just, what were you thinking there at the end? Were you thinking, here we go again, we're going to go to the top? No, I had confidence we're going to win. Yeah, yeah confidence in Eddie. <laughs> uh, no free throws in the game either. Have you ever seen that before? Nah, as Paul said, obviously he's uh, seen a lot more games than I have, but uh, yeah, I've never seen no free throws in a, uh, by any team before. How has your, as an individual, has your confidence risen the last couple of weeks? If you're shooting very well, obviously, equal your career high again, back-to-back -back games? Yeah, I guess it's just uh, just keep working on it, you know, just keep coming in early every morning, uh, working out before practice and get shots after practice. All that stuff adds up and I guess it's starting to show. Paul said a few times, and plenty of other coaches, probably even, even Trev last year, that you're going to be one hell of a player in the NBL probably this year and, and well into the future. How do you sort of keep yourself grounded and, and make sure you don't sort of get ahead of yourself, I suppose? Well, just sort of keep the mentality, you know, get better every day, get in the gym every day, get stronger, work on your game on the court, and uh, I think it'll just it'll follow. Do you think there's growing belief in the team that, you know, when the crunch time comes, you guys can get the job done? Oh, absolutely. You know, we've got, the, we've got a hell of a basketball team, and... Uh, you know, even though we've had a couple of close games, we've um, been able to pull through in the end, which is good. It shows, says a lot about the group, a lot of character amongst the group. So, uh, yeah, I think I've definitely got a uh, good team in that perspective. What did you think the unsportsman like foul did to Abby Gill? Well, I was the same as, same as Paul. I didn't actually see it. I just sort of heard the rest blowing the whistles and I sort of turned around and sort of people holding Eddie back and I didn't know what happened. I actually stuffed it up over the uh, microphone and said it was on Demos and then... I didn't know, really, didn't know what happened really. It uh, seemed to fire him up though, didn't he? He came out after all done play. Well, yeah, absolutely. He's, uh, he's obviously got a lot of games under his belt and he's uh, very experienced, so he sort of took that into consideration. He came out and played well. What is it to like to play alongside a guy with that much experience? I mean, you said earlier you have faith in him to know he'll get the job done. Yeah, well, as I said, he's played, well, he's played in the NBA, he's played a lot of games, so he's got a lot of experience, knows what he's doing out there, so it's good, good to play under him. Gordy, you must not like coming to the swamp anymore. It's into a place of heartbreak. No, no, I think it's great because at least, at least you're in with a chance. And I mean, you know, I thought the guys fought really hard tonight and I thought we did a good job 
to disrupt. Obviously, you know, keep it to you know 65, 60. That's that's where we we have to be. I thought the guys did a fantastic job with that. Worked hard. Thought we rebounded extremely well. We looked after the ball well. We just we just didn't shoot the ball well. That that's the third thing that we needed to do. You know, we could have shot better from the three point line. We could have put a lot more pressure on that. You know, that's really a, a, a big strength of our game, which has probably dropped off a little bit. You know, in the in the last month or so. Uh, maybe, I don't know, I think we might be shooting too many, I don't know, in practice. I'm not sure what it is, Timmy might be able to tell you that, but the guys work hard on it and, uh, you know, like I said in the change, I think we, we need to make sure we take a lot of confidence out of this weekend because the pleasing thing for us is we started to get that consistency back in our game. Do you think down the stretch there at the end, like you, you might have run out of gas a little bit or...? Uh, after last oh, you know you can always you know you can always say that, but you know you would hope the adrenaline was pop, you know pumping and stuff like that. But we, you know, we just we gave ourselves a chance. We you know we had a, a shot to go go in front, and put more pressure. I thought the guys did a good job in the end. They made a play to win it, and that's that's what happens. We yeah. can always we can look at it and say, well, maybe we should have fouled straight away and put them under pressure and had 10 seconds to go to the other end <clears> and win. Uh, maybe we'll do that if we had it, you know, had it over again. And maybe we could say we shouldn't have left Larry stranded on the middle on ball and had someone else. You know, there's a, a lot of things there, but in the heat of the battle, when it is, that's what it is. Um, but it was a great contest, uh, you know, good game, and in the end, uh, they got over uh, on us again. Have you ever seen no free throws for a side in a game before? And all the basketball games you watched? I don't, didn't even. Really, I, I know we hadn't been getting to the line too much, so it, I don't know I mean, whether that's relevant or whether it's not relevant. I mean, referees call the game the way they see it. They don't go and say, well, Wollongong's had this many foul shots, we better get the other team this or this many fouls or so on. That, you know, it's hard, hard enough game to coach it to worry about refereeing it because I tell you what, I'd just go bananas if, if that was the case. Oscar again, um, stand out for you guys tonight. No, I thought everyone was. I mean, you know, we put Oscar in a position to use the strengths that he has, and he can't do that unless his teammates put him into that position. And he's a shooter; that's what he does. And you know, we expect him to to knock him down. You know, I thought Timmy, you know, off the bench was exactly what we needed. We needed that energy. I thought, uh, you know, Tyson tried hard, but we needed those young guys and that fresh legs to to complement our aging aging brigade. And I thought the guys did a did a pretty good job of it. Um, what do you make of young Todd Blackfield? Really oh, you know, excellent. We, like we, you know, we, we classify him as one of their best three-point shooters. So when we're looking at them, you know, that, that's the disappointing thing, to leave him open so much. Sure, we, you know, part of our thing was to, to leave, you know, Chris Cedar open. And to his credit, the last two games, he's probably been the difference in us, you know, losing both games. Because if he hasn't stepped up and make those buckets, then, you know, we're probably getting over the line. So that was part of the, the tactics and, you know, the credit to him and the credit to this organisation that, you know, when you look at your team and the guys that are contributing for your team, they're local guys. They're guys that come through your system. So that's something you should be really proud of, you know, what the club's doing. Are you expecting that a replacement point guard signed by next week? I hope so. You know, we're, uh, you know, obviously looking at, the guys that are available and Allende is available. There's another guy that we don't really want to mention that's here, and we would, you know, prefer to fill it with someone that's in Australia, simply because of the the time factor and the cost factor, and getting someone in to, you know, to help the guys as quick as possible. That last play was that what you were expecting the crops to, to throw at you to go to the? Well, the well that, that's that's what they've done as before, but again, what, what we decided to do was to foul. And, and they went back it again and trying, and we, we probably should have went early again and, and probably tried to get out of his hand. Or like I said, um, there's a number of things that we probably could have changed up if you had your, if you had another crack at it. But you know, in reality, Larry's job off that is to is to take away the three, and when that guy penetrated, we should have had some rotation and made him earn it from the foul line. Yeah, um, I was talking to the guys in the shoot around, so I really like the hoops here. And of um, yeah, they just got that nice. I think all the North Queensland hoops are the same. They just got that nice touch to them, and they were going down tonight. I was trying to be aggressive, and um, and the guys are giving a good job when I was posting up to to really look at me and making me a target. So, you know, uh, it's a bit sad to win uh, lose like that again. But you know, 
we played them tough and held them to 65 points on the home floor, so we've got to take something from that. The coach seems fairly happy. Are you guys kind of taking a positive reaction out of this point? Well, yeah, the, what, the situation with us on the ladder right now is we're trying to, I mean, we've got to find positives and we can't just right off the season by any chance. We've got to, you know, we've got to keep building and, you know, if things go our way, we, we have a shot, you know, and if, it, if anything, it's for pride, you know, so, um, you know, we're, we're glad we've come up with a weekend in North Queensland double and played two good teams really tough and uh, got on top of one of them, which is a great thing. And, um, yeah, just, uh, we were just one shot away from this one tonight. Yeah, it's uh, it's in the in the crunch time. You don't really, it's not really a factor because you just like coach said, you're running on adrenaline. But you know, at times when um when the game starts to slow down, it does you know it gets at your legs a little bit. But I think you know we're conditioned well enough to to fight through it. And um, coach does a good job getting fresh legs in and um, knowing when the guys are blowing gas. And so you know, I felt good out there tonight. Can you shed any light on what went down with Hill and Seymour? No, I can't. I, uh, Tyson said he threw one. Uh, the truth to the fatter, I don't really know. <laughs> but, um, you know, that's just heat of the moment stuff. And there's no malice in that. Like, they'll, you know, good players will leave that on the court. You know, it's just the heat of the moment. And Tyson's a guy that's not going to back down from anything. You know, that's, that's the way he is. And we love him for that because, you know, we know he's got our backs. And um, it's, uh, you know, like I said, just the heat of the mo moment and a bit of an emotional thing. It seemed to, to fire Eddie Gill up. Do, do you think it was a, a bad move in, in the end? Or? No, I, I don't think. I think. Um, I haven't looked at the stats, but I thought we uh, kept Eddie Gill in, in check tonight pretty well. I mean, 65 points, and I think they had a good spread of points. Like you said, Todd Blanchfield played well. Um, Chris Cedar hit some shots again, so I think, and Mick uh, Mick Cedar also came down and hit some big shots on the stretch. So I think they had a good spread tonight. But you know, 65 points to hold the team with that many shooters, and also we did a good job on Peter Crawford tonight as well. But yeah, 65 points with that many weapons on a team is is pretty pretty good for us. No, I've never seen that before. Um, I, if it got brought up at half time and they hadn't shot any, I, I didn't try and take any care of it. Yeah, no, it's definitely. I, I, I'd go out to the limb and say that's the first in NBL, maybe. I'm, I'm just saying. <laughs> so, Crocs fans, that wraps up another game at the Swamp. The next one, of course, will be on the eve of Australia Day. This is Craig McDonald at the Swamp for Townsville News Online.